the distinguished delegate of Yemen. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I congr the Republic of Yemen congr congratulates you on your being elected as the president of the 71st session of the U United Nations General Assembly. Madam President, thank you for this opportunity to discuss the challenges faced by efforts to ensure the country's return to peace and stability after the resurgence of tribal politics in Yemen. Let me explain before you the August World Forum, the real and sincere conduct statement of the political scenario of the Republic of Yemen. We are a country loving peace. We believe in quality of life. Progress of a country or any country shall only be ensured by prevalence of peace. But world news agencies serve you tragic war news from Yemen. We desire peace, but we deal with war. This is a paradox. Help us to get rid of this. The terrorist groups slap a negative image on us. The Houthi insurgencies, the emergence of the Al-Qaeda and Islamic State in Yemen have all contributed to the misery, which is now being faced by the entire population of Yemen. The condition in Yemen has worsened after several airstrikes, the most recent one during a funeral in the capital Sana'a on 8th October, led by the Arab coalition. This airstrike is most definitely the brainchild of Saudi Arabia, which, even though aimed at the Houthi militia, has affected the commoners in Yemen. More than 143 people were killed and more than 520 were injured seriously during the airstrike. The mayor of Sana'a, Abdul Qadir Hilal and two members of the de-escalation and coordination committee were also part of the deceased. The bombing of a funeral is the most heinous of acts which surely establishes their brutality. We are a peace-loving nation and the various terrorist organizations who call themselves freedom fighters are using our nation as a means to spread terrorism. ISIL and Al-Qaeda have rooted in Yemen and have added fuel to the tribal politics. Al-Qaeda in particular is winning people over to their sides with their humanitarian efforts like providing portable water, digging canals and providing food. Though these acts of philanthropy are laudable, the motives behind them are a cause of worry to Yemen and to the world in general. The Al-Qaeda plays the dual role of humanitarian help to common people on one side and places the nation in a rat trap on the other. The UN Charter promises to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. The UN claims that after its institution, a World War III has not occurred, but the situation in Yemen since 2015 says otherwise. We acknowledge the United Nations efforts in helping Yemen recover its economic balance and restoring basic services through the United Nations Development Program. We are grateful for the international community's continued support to our proposal for a comprehensive agreement and calls for a cessation of hostilities. The quadrilateral meetings of the foreign ministers of the United States, United Kingdom, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates in Jeddah, New York, and in London has supported these efforts, along with their counterparts from the remaining members of the Gulf Cooperation Council. These calls were echoed in other meetings with Bahrain of the and the Deputy Foreign Minister of Russia, the Sultanate of Oman, France, Egypt, Kuwait, and Qatar. I am grateful to the council members for their unwavering support of the efforts to restore peace in Yemen, but our need is a comprehensive solution for the existing political turmoil, which will in turn lead to the quality of life we desire for. Thank you.